Okay, so what is magnetism? <laughs> oh, the quintessential question. Well, we have to know what magnetism is because we got magnets and our cell phones, our radios, our TV sets, our hearing aids, or several inside this iPad and several inside this camera, several inside the cam, a bunch of them in the tele, cars, TVs, or oh, well, there's magnets everywhere. Um, God knows how many millions of inventions have magnets in them. Does humanity have any idea what a magnet is, or what defines a magnet, or what magnetism is? No. Did Tesla ever define it? No. Did Faraday ever define it? No. Did Charles Proteus Steinmetz ever define it? No. James Clerk Maxwell? No. Oliver Heaviside? No. Dr. Oleg D. Jeffamico? No. Did that moron, that pecker would Einstein ever define magnetism? No. Well, see. 100% of the visible cosmos is held up, uh, meaning from the micro scale, the atomic scale, is held up by magnetism. I grew up, and, and unfortunately, thankfully I superseded it a long time ago, public school systems. And we were taught this BS in a science class that, well, an atom is 99.99% .99 empty space. And, like, if the Earth, for example, were shrunk down and all the atomic volume of every atom comprising the Earth was removed, and the atom was every particle against every, of course, everything in the world is fields, and the, co and the universe is fields, certainly not particles, that's where atomistic, atomistic uh, principle only belongs to quantum and relativity, if you're able to shrink the Earth down, it would be about the size of a marble. Because 99%, 99 99.99% of it, well, this is nonsense. What comprises the interatomic volume is magnetodielectricity inside the very heart of every atom. Of course, the nucleus spinning radically, creating a processional dielectric and magnetic movements. 100% of the volume, this isn't in dispute, however, 100% of the volume of the visible uh, cosmos aesthetos, meaning the aesthetic or the existential uh, cosmos, meaning empirically so, i.e. atomic and above, is held up by magnetism. Humanity has no idea what magnetism, no idea what magnetism is. So, someone sent me a copy of uh, a neat little magazine. I always kind of enjoyed it, even though it was very pedestrian and stupid and superficial. And uh, I recently got it. It's called Here, How It Works. And the front cover is magnetism. This, ma this video, this... Uh, this uh, magazine was just released, How It Works, Explaining the Invisible Force that Protects the Planet. Well, not only that, it holds up, you know, everything in the universe. Um, so, <laughs> of course, I knew what it would be before I flipped to page 24 of the magazine. And but it says right there on the cover page, it says, we're going to explain the invisible force. What is magnetism? And, of course, there's no explanation of it at all. I mean, there's even barely a description. Um, this is what really shocks people. Nobody knows what... A lot of people, too, confuse magnetism with a magnet. They actually equate the two, but they're two completely different uh, terms. Uh, magnetism, uh, the, uh, the uh, force flux uh, divergence, is something totally different uh, from a magnet. A magnet is uh, what actually defines, you know, technically a magnet is nothing other than uh, field coherency. The same thing that defines a laser is the only thing that defines a laser light application with stimulated emission of radiation is uh, field coherency of the coaxial nature of light. It's so what differentiates out a light bulb from a laser if they're both emitting five watts of power. Light is light is light. Let's say they're the same frequency, which is not the case. Well, let's say they are for a sake of argument. You know, what differentiates out denotation a light from a laser? Well, field coherency. A five watt light bulb is worthless. You can't even read a newspaper by it. But a five watt laser, that will burn a hole in your ass, literally. And I have a lot of lasers too, by the way, incredibly, also including some extremely powerful ones. Um, uh, something else you should also look up, because this is the really funny part. There's a mysterious part of a magnet, and I've got like a hundred videos where I show it to you. It's a dielectric inertial plane, except current science, it's, it's, somewhere along the line they came up with uh, calling it the, the block wall. Uh, they actually call it the domain separator. They call it a region or domain. But it isn't a region or domain because we have self-similarity just like a Mandelbrot fractal. Self-similarity is actually the more appropriate term for it is incommensurability because it is indivisible and it is not located at the center of a magnet. You can see it underneath the field viewing film. You can see it underneath the ferrocell. cell. It has to be there uh, necessitatively. 
Um, but if you were to take a magnet, for example, and this were a magnet, you could slice it a million billion times top to bottom. And each little section would have a quote-unquote north pole and a south pole. So obviously it can't be a region located at the middle of a magnet because as soon as you separate it, it immediately divides itself again like rabbits. You divide that again and again and again. You can divide it you know, down to the point where you can't even see it anymore and each little slice uh, we'll have a quote-unquote North Pole and a quote-unquote South Pole. A magnet doesn't actually have poles at all. It has the inverse to counter space. What defines the geometric uh, definition of a magnet, of course we have to know what the Lamour frequency is, otherwise uh, magnetic resonance imagers wouldn't work. It's called the Lamour frequency. It operates at a frequency of 42 point... It is a various uh, a range there, but it's like 42 Teslas uh, no, 44, excuse me, I'm on, uh, I was thinking about something else, it's 42.2 uh, 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 megahertz, yeah, excuse me, now I got it right, 42 something megahertz. Uh, that's the processional frequency. What defines magnetism is it is a reciprocating processional hyperboloid that extrapolates out its field pressure mediations in a hypertrochoidal fashion. You actually see that underneath the ferro cell, I just thought, I discovered the formula before, for it before I ever even discovered the ferro cell invention. Doing a bunch of deep research, I found out there was an invention back in uh, 2007 called the ferro cell. But what you need to research, and it's something that will make you laugh, I mean, there is, of course, no definition uh, for what magnetism is. The supposed, now he's dead now, thankfully, the, the pathetic little asshole that he was, Richard Feynman, and I, I made a video about it about a couple weeks ago. He's asked the question very gently. He says, what is magnetism? The British uh, uh, guy asks. And Feynman sits there and wiggles and squirms in his chair. And then he starts talking about somebody's grandmother slipping on the ice. And it, it's just pathetic. The guy wiggles. and it, It's okay not to know, but just don't pretend that you do know. And uh, the guy was just... He had a lot of charisma, but he was nothing more than a moron. I've got all his books and read all of his articles. There's nobody that's ever defined what magnetism is, much less accurately, except for myself. You want to think that's hubristic, that's perfectly fine. But anyway, inside this magazine, I love it. It's a book, a magazine that comes out periodically called How It Works. It defines things and how they work, and it's called The Power of Magnetism. And of course, I knew there wouldn't be an answer inside, much less an attempt, and there is none. It talks about how magnets are used and whatnot, but it says right here in the cover, it says explaining what magnetism is. There's no explanation at all of what magnetism is. The only thing they actually uh, attempt is they talk about magnetic fields. Here you can actually see it here. They talk about poles and a magnetic field has this shape underneath iron filings and field lines. Of fi no, no branch of science has ever defined a field, much less what a field flux line is. There are endless descriptions of it and endless uh, quantifications of it that you can use from a Gauss meter, so on and so forth, but nobody's ever defined a field, much less what a field line is. And defining it is impossible. And why is it impossible? Because it has no quanta. Quanta, quantity, quantum. That's where quantum comes from. It has no quantity. What does that mean? It means that nothing comprises a field that is empirical. Everything in the universe is fields, and fields are not particles, and they operate instantaneously at a distance. Instantly. Instantaneous action at a distance is like uh, yelling out Satan inside of the middle of a church service. So you just don't talk about stuff like that. And fields are not particles. They're particle-free uh, uh, ether perturbations, or inertia perturbations. And of course there are four modalities of that. Dielectricity, electricity, magnetism and what we conventionally call gravity, but di uh, dielectric acceleration or magnetic attraction, quote-unquote, is all that gravity is. There's no autonomous force known as gravity. But we can dismiss one, a magnet. These are just descriptions, too. They're not explanations. A magnet doesn't even have poles. It has the inverse of counter space. You have to understand what a hyperboloid is. If you don't know what a hyperboloid is, you might want to look it up. Type in hyperboloid. So a magnet doesn't even have poles, but this is still a description. It's not an explanation of what magnetism is. Field lines, okay, nobody's ever defined magnetism, much less what a field, uh, uh, nobody's ever defined what a field is, much less a field line. Opposites attract, well, that's another description. I could show a little three-year-old, say, what are these magnets are doing when they accelerate towards you? Well, they're attracting each other. That's a description. Children can give descriptions. Okay, what defines out expertise and understanding, comprehension, denotatively, i.e. wisdom versus empirical knowledge is not descriptions, rather explanations. Oh, opposites attract. Same poles repel. Well, that's the same thing in reverse. Um, 
Iron filings are forced apart, and, uh, the iron filing... Yeah, there's nowhere in this ma- well, you know, I knew what the answer was going to be before I opened up the book. Anyway, but there's nowhere in this magazine in the article that defines the very cover. How mag- what is magnetism? Let's explain this mysterious force. Well, at least they get that right, it's a force. It's not an acceleration. <laughs> but it's polarized. But you can never- here's something one of the most brilliant scientists uh, ever said, and uh, he's absolutely correct. It's impossible to understand electrical theory, and this is something that Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, the rest agreed with. And um, these are the people that gave you 100% of the power grid in the entire world. It is impossible to understand electrical theory without understanding counter space, i.e. inertia, i.e. ether. Um, that is the only way you're going to understand what a hyperboloid is. If you look at a magnet underneath a ferrule cell or underneath a magnetic field viewing film, you're going to see a hyperboloid. Most people have no idea what the F a hyperboloid is, but look it up and go find out for yourself. The magnetism is nothing other than a projection of the loss of inertia. The only person that actually got really, really close to it was uh, Faraday, and he called magnetism an explanation, one short thing, and he's correct on this. He called it the dielectric field. That's correct. Dielectricity and loss of inertia, which is necessitated at a formula I discovered, 1 over the ratio of 5 to the power of negative 3. The loss of that inertia extrapolates itself out necessitatively, or in the ancient Greek, ananke, out as a reciprocating, it sounds complicated, but it's not. Reciprocating, processional, procession, you know what procession is, okay. Reciprocating, you know what reciprocating is, reciprocating processional hypertrochoid. Reciprocating processional hyperboloid, excuse me, that extrapolates itself out in field pressure mediation in a hypertrochoidal fashion. Okay, reciprocating processional hyperboloid. Look up what a hyperboloid is. It's also in my book in great detail, although much further detail in the volume uh, four, the fourth edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. But at this point in time, we can say definitively, and I'll argue anybody in the world, and I'll, I'll just destroy them in a debate. I've already done so many, many, countless, hundreds of times, literally over, destroy people in debate on defining magnetism. I always, uh, I always uh, get them up against the wall, uh, not literally speaking, but proverbially speaking, and I, you know, I destroy them. And destroying them is very easy, because all you have to do is talk about fields, and fields are not particles, and they have no idea what a field is. And secondly, you have to talk about the block wall. How is a block wall self-centering? Because when you define a block wall, and you define a quote-unquote North Pole and a South Pole, how is it always self-centering if you dissect the magnet? How is it always immediately self-centering? Well, it's not a region or a domain, because the block wall is not located at the center of a magnet. It is not forced there. It is a pressure mediation, the inverse to spatial divergence. So what is the inverse to spatial divergence? Counterspatial convergence. Okay, this is why you'll never understand electrical theory. Never. Unless you understand non-Euclidean counterspace, i.e. inertia. It is 100% impossible. And this is also the premise of Tesla, Eric P. Dollard, and others. And these are the people that gave you 100% of the electrical grid that you are currently using. Okay? Thanks for watching. Catch you later.